well, I've accumulated enough components to build another computer with used parts. This is a Dell Dimension 5100. I got this from a co-worker of mine. And uh, I guess a friend of his had upgraded and took a lot of parts out of this and built something else with it. So it's just the case, motherboard, processor, and floppy drive. Now the processor I've already taken out and upgraded a notch. I think it had a 2.8 gig uh, Pentium 4 with 1 meg of cache. Uh, I had a, uh, I think it's a 3.2 gig Pentium 4 with 2 megs of cache on another motherboard that I wasn't using. So I, I swapped them, put the faster one in this system. And uh, actually I almost forgot to comment. This is a BTX form factor system. Basically an inverted version of ATX. And you know, you might not notice it at first, but it's everything is the opposite of ATX. Normally you'd be working in the other side of the case. You know, the drives would be over here and uh, the back of the motherboard would be over here. You can see the PCI Express slot. It's actually, you know, everything is just kind of inverted. I'm not used to working on a system like this. It's the first time I've, I've worked on a BTX based system. But anyway, I gotta see what I have here. I have a pair of LG DVD burners that came out of my main computer when I upgraded to SATA drives. I have a beat up old IBM Dustar 250 gig SATA drive with a bunch of bad sectors but it'll do the job temporarily. Over here I have a GeForce 7600 GT card that needs a new cooler which I'm going to put this on in place of it. Another nice piece of uh, computer equipment to get for cheap. These Acbell power supplies. This is a model API 4FS06. I got this from a place called Hyper Micro, I think for less than $20. It's 550 watts and it was originally used in I think a Sun Java workstation. They're built like a tank, uh, weigh a ton. Let me see if I can look in here. There's actually two circuit boards stacked in there and this thing is just packed with components. I've had this apart. The capacitors are not top notch but the build quality certainly is so I'm not expecting any failures anytime soon. And for the price you really can't complain. It even has a real fan grill. Nice unrestricted setup for airflow instead of those cheap punched out metal grills. My only complaint really is that there's no power switch on the back for when you want to shut the whole system off uh, including the standby power to change things such as RAM or video card stuff like that but uh, I'm going to have to make a minor modification to the back of the case to get this to fit and I'll show that in just a minute okay I've got the power supply mounted in the case now you can tell how, just how heavy this darn thing is it's actually you know leaning down over here from lack of support the, now the back of the case, I needed to cut a notch here to clear the screw. Very, very soft metal, so it wasn't very hard to do. Other than that, fits right in. This is not one of the Dells that uses a proprietary pinout for the ATX connector. This uses a standard power supply. Now, another thing about this power supply, there is three 12 volt rails. You can tell that the hard drive connectors have their own rail because the 12 volt wire is yellow with a blue stripe instead of plain yellow. Also, this only has a 8 pin connector for the CPU power. So I got an adapter cable to bring it down to 4 pins. That connector does not separate into two like a lot of uh, generic power supplies do. There's two SATA connectors, which is just right for this system. It's only room for two hard drives anyway. And four connectors very close together. I'm assuming this would normally go to a rack of drives that are stacked right on top of each other. And 
the ATX connector is just a standard 24 pin, which is exactly what this motherboard needs. So let me start getting these wires connected and see about getting these drives installed. Another word on the drives, when they, when they took all their stuff out of this case, they only left one hard drive caddy in here. And also the CD-ROMs use screw, you know, spacers under the screws and they make it kind of a quick release system where the drive pushes in and latches in place. Since I don't have those spacers, I'm going to have to just use some normal screws and uh, try to get everything in there. What I did is I stuck the screws in the sides of the drives and just left a little bit of space where the screw goes in that slot in the metal just enough to hold the drive in place and also be snug at the same time. So I'm going to pull this bezel off the front here. You got a tab here and a tab here. Sorry about the uh, focus there. It's kind of hard to do this all with one hand. Put one more tab. This bezel pulls right off. Now I'm going to slide these DVD drives in here and get these cables hooked up. Well, it wasn't easy, but I managed to get all the cables routed and connected. I got everything tucked out of the way. Power supply fits like a glove in this system, just like it's made for it. The only downside is the RAM slots are way back in there. Now for the RAM. <clears throat> what I have here is a 2 gigabyte kit uh, of G-Skill DDR2-800 RAM. This system only uses DDR2-533 memory, but the 800 memory will work just fine. Plus, I have the added benefit of this memory being useful in newer systems, like my home theater computer. Uh, if anything ever happens with a Dell, or I decide to upgrade to a faster motherboard, the memory will already be uh, perfect for a faster board. I already have this exact same kit installed in my home theater PC, so I know it's good stuff. Um, I'm not really familiar with G-Skill, but they seem to be getting pretty good ratings on Newegg, so I've bought a couple of sets of these and haven't had any trouble with them so far. So I'm going to try and uh, get my big fat hands in there and get this RAM installed. On this motherboard, you probably can't tell, but there's four RAM slots. Two have black tabs on the sockets and two have white tabs. Uh, one channel is a matching pair of the same color tabs. So if you want to run uh, dual channel, or actually I, I, I said that wrong. Um, to run dual channel you need to have one stick of RAM in each socket of the same color. So in this case I'm going to put both sticks of RAM in the white sockets. That will allow dual channel operation. If you put one stick in the white socket and one stick in the black socket the system will still work you'll just lose a lot of memory bandwidth so let me try and get this stuff in there I found it much easier to lay the computer on its side to get that RAM in there not only did I have a lot better light but it was just a lot easier physically to work with but now you can see the RAM is installed in both white sockets ready to go now the next step is the video card. I gotta change the cooler on it because these darn uh, high speed coolers on these cards, they don't last very long. In fact, I think this card was about a year old before the fan crapped out. So I'm gonna try and put this aftermarket cooler on there and get this mounted up. <clears throat> 